Hey everybody, welcome to For Goodness Sake. I'm your host, Master and Teclo, as always, and today I want to talk to you about my first semester at UCLA Law. One of the first things that I noticed at UCLA um, were how amazing my peers were. I immediately could tell that I was surrounded by people who were um, from amazingly diverse backgrounds all over the country, um, all over the world, um, in many cases even, um, and who also had just incredible skills and talents that I was flabbergasted by. Um, we had collections of people who were artists, um, multiple link, multiple uh, polyglots, right? They, m many people knew many languages or multiple languages. Um, people were talented, people were athletes, um, people were well-spoken, people were killers in the classroom. I mean, one of the most striking things from class that I noticed was as I was going home and struggling through these this material and not even knowing what the heck I was reading for a lot of nights, I'd come to class and like every time somebody was called on, they were just killing these answers. Like I was thinking I have my answer in my head. I'm like, I got it. I actually knew that one for, for once. I knew that answer. Then he, you know, somebody somebody else, you know, answers a question and and it's just like something totally out of the blue of what I was thinking. And you know, the, the person is good, good, very good. Okay, next, you know, <laughs> um, you know, just crazy stuff, right? So um uh that that was a a huge double edged sword for me or at least on my it was a double edged sword effect on my mental health this past semester was the fact that my amazing peers were just so damn amazing you know like i loved appreciating them for all their awesomeness and i wanted to be near them and close to them and learn from them because they were so awesome um but i was also incredibly um insecure about myself because of how amazing they are um it, it also kind of makes it hard to appreciate, you know, all the goodness in somebody when you're constantly reverting that back about how every quality that they have that's great means um, and, and maybe a quality that you don't have or don't notice in yourself in a moment. Um, every one of those qualities I, I use to kind of tell myself that I'm actually not good enough then. I'm not good enough to be here. I'm not smart enough to be here talented enough to be here you know these people are good and these people belong but not me you know um so that 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 first note that first thing that i noticed at ucla was actually one of the worst best and worst effects um on my mental health at ucla because um it was worse because i it, it continued to foster my insecurities to compare myself constantly to everybody around me um but it was also one of the best things because everybody at ucla everybody that i talked to um were incredibly kind to me incredibly supportive incredibly inclusive and welcoming and i really genuinely do not believe i would have been able to get through ucla law without that first semester anyway without all the support and love and and kindness from my friends so everybody um across um uh, my cohort and even older people um, alumni and uh, older students, I appreciate you all so much. They are great, um, and you'll, I'm sure you'll be seeing many of their names uh, um, in some capacity uh, in the future. Or those will be behind the scenes doing awesome things that you know you're, you'll benefit from in your life because great people. Um, so that was what, that was one of the first things I noticed, um, and uh, one of the next things that I noticed was like. I'm going to have to try way harder than I've ever tried before in my life at anything, not just at school, not just at, at, at work, anything. Um, I really realized very quickly that the pace of um, material was moving way beyond what I'd ever expected, um, what I even imagined was possible for people to uh, comprehend. Um, and then I also noticed that like beyond just the pace of things, like the, the material itself um, was just so difficult and I didn't know that, I didn't know that it would be so difficult to read, right? Um, you know, the, the, the model of law school is you read these cases, these legal cases, and then like you talk about different, you know, kind of like how they fit into basic, um, legal concepts in class. And it was really difficult for me to even understand that that's what was happening. Um, even though I was told it, I can't say I was surprised. Everybody, you know, people warned me at UCLA, they try to really help us out, but I just, some, it was hard for me to hard to have things click in my mind. So I didn't understand like why we were reading cases, like what the point was. I was trying to read every single detail 
um, in every case that I read, but then I was coming to class and we weren't even talking really about it much about those cases. We were, but not really in different ways. And I just didn't understand how to synthesize everything that I was reading. Um, or if I didn't, if I did understand it, I was struggling to do it anyway. Um, I was struggling to organize my notes. I was struggling to realize what I should be writing down. Everything felt like, um, I was working at a hundred percent, um, and still only getting like, you know, 10% of the material, right. Or 10% of the work done. Um, still feeling like I wasn't doing enough of my readings every day, still feeling I wasn't taking away what I was supposed to take away from lecture. Right. So a lot of, a lot of struggles there. And, um, that created, um, that created like a, 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 a desire in me to figure out like, okay, I'm working so hard, but like, what do I do here? I had a few crossroads moments throughout the semester where I was like, I'm struggling and I need to find a way to like kick it into another gear. Um, in my past, I've, I've struggled in life. I've struggled in school. I've found, um, that the one way that I can, um, succeed, even though I've struggled is if I can just dig deeper when it's the hardest, when it's the most challenging, if I can just find another gear to work in, to, you know, to dig into and, uh, and work harder, um, despite the fact that I'm struggling now, it will all work out in the end. Um, and so that now, I did not do that just one time, you know, which is normally a good enough moment, you know, to, it's normally a good enough, uh, number of times for me to like click into another gear in the past, maybe a couple times, um, and depending on the life situation, I had to do that like four times throughout the semester. Um, and it still felt like, um, going into finals and, and going into final assignments that we had to turn in, it still felt like I was, I was drowning and I was just not able to come up for air in terms of getting all the work that I needed to get done, done and feeling good about whatever work I did, uh, finish. So, uh, realizing that, um, my, my peers were amazing and realizing that I was gonna have to work harder than ever before were both things that were, um, uh, challenging about uh, that first semester. And actually both took a toll on my mental health because um, those are both good things. You know, it's always good to work hard, you know, in life. It, it's good for the soul. It's good for the mind and the body. But what was bad about my, my finding extra gears to work into was I wasn't just, um, you know, finding ways to reorient my life to uh, be better, be smarter, you know, be healthier and therefore be able to work, um, work better as well. I was sacrificing a lot of the things that I um, do to keep myself, my mind, my body healthy along the way. Um, I was sacrificing sleep. I was slack sacrificing food. I was sacrificing time spent, you know, doing breathing, doing writing, making videos, um, exercising. And um, that was leading to me just only having releases when I'm, you know, uh, you know, going out at the bar with, uh, you know, some of my fellow students or, um, hanging out with a buddy and having a drink or, um, whatever else there, which is not bad in moderation as, as I think most adults understand. But when that's the only way that I was able to kind of blow off steam, um, rather than actually literally relaxing and re literally taking time away from, um, everything else in my life and just going to look at a beautiful sunset, going to take a walk around my block, you know, um, or just create whatever I create that makes me feel good. Um, it created a huge buildup of, um, uh, pent up energy, um, tension, um, anxiety, uh, stress, um, depression that never ever gets released. Um, that never ever gets like assuaged. It's just building, building, building. And, um, my internal motor was also running at a hundred percent, 110%, 120% all the time too, you know? Every time I found a, a new gear to kick it into, it was really just like a new level of stress, of, of ferventness that I was putting on my my mind and body. Um, wasn't like a new way to uh, you know uh, do anything in a in a smart way. It was just like a new uh, and more severe level of stress that I was putting on my body um, that I was never really able to relax from until the the, the semester ended. Um, so that was much needed when I, when that semester did end and, um, and that stress did, um, and even a little bit before that semester ended, I realized right before finals, I realized that like, I was, I was in a place where I wasn't feeling good at all. You know, like there had been just like 
consecutive nights of not sleeping and not feeling good. And, um, you know, I was talking to my girlfriend and I was talking to my mom and they're just kind of like, you know, are you okay? You know, like you don't, you don't seem okay. You don't seem like yourself. And, um, you know, they really did check in with me and, and a lot of my friends were there for me as well. And I really appreciate all of them, all of you, all of my friends all across the country, my, my high school friends, my, my college friends, um, and, and even my friends from law school were really concerned and, and helping, um, you know, just supportive, you know, just like checking in with me um, during a tough time in my life. And I really appreciate all of them for that. Well, that led to the decision that I was like, maybe, um, you know, not sleeping at all, not eating at all, um, not taking care of my body in any way is not the way to be successful at anything in life you know uh tom brady is going to bed at you know 9 p.m and that's why he's you know every night and he's like eating you know i don't know like you know the the, ve the best vegetables you know and proteins in the world you know uh, uh lebron james same thing you know the, the the reason these people you know serena williams was able to play you know, win a, you know, championship, win a major while pregnant and then, you know, play uh, at, at the top level after that. The reason why these people can do these things is not because they are, um, you know, at 40 or 38 or 37 or whatever. It's not because they're just like destroying their bodies. They're not running themselves into ground, into the ground, you know, um, they're actually doing the things they need to do. They're doing the work, you know, that they have to do in a day. And then they're taking time away from that work to recover, to recharge, to relax, um, and, uh, prepare their body for, um, the coming battle the next day. You know, there's always another battle and they're ready for it because of the time that they take taking care of their body and taking care of their mind, um, and their soul as well. So I realized that I needed to do that too. I'm Tom Brady, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much the exact same in terms of, uh, uh ability to play the game of football. Um, uh, Serena Williams, uh, I think she got me at tennis a little bit. Um, she might, she might have me there, but, um, and, and LeBron might have me on in basketball, but I think I could, I could be like, you know, Tom Brady-esque driving down the field, two minute warning, you know, just dink, dunk, dink, dunk, slice, cut, touchdown, game over, Super Bowl champion, mess and tackle. Um, so if Tom Brady can do it, uh, why can't I do it? So Going into finals, I realized that I needed to pull back and it was, um, and basically just like sleep, you know, like it's like, that was like number one on my, on my list was like, just like go to sleep, uh, you know, like stop staying up all night. It's not good. And that was super difficult, a super difficult decision to make because I was like doing this the whole year. I'd put all this work in for an entire semester, you know, five, four or five months. And then right before the finish line, I'm like, oh, you're going to change everything up now. Like you're going to like whole, you know, um, do less work, you know, is what it seemed like to me. If you're going to do less work, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, work not as hard as you'd been doing this whole semester. So that was difficult. That was a, a really hard choice to make. But in the end, I think it was the right choice for me. Um, it was the right thing that I, um, take care of my body a little bit more. And I think it actually helped me, um, going into my finals, uh, to do actually the best that I could do, um, to like take care of my body a little bit. Um, and I did my best. I'm excited for that. I'm happy with uh, um, with that um, process. Um, I'm happy with uh, learning and and uh, le remind, reminding myself to take care of myself over allowing the kind of thoughts and anxieties and stresses in my head dictate what I should do with my body and life. Right. So um, that was awesome. Um, it wasn't great at times, but it was also an awesome semester. Um, I met amazing people. Um, I can already tell lifelong friends and, um, I'm excited for the next semester. So, uh, that is semester one going into semester two. I'm really excited for the changes that I'm, um, already making and I know they're going to be challenging to uh, stick to, but every day is a new opportunity. And so I'm just going to continue to reset whenever I need to and make sure that, uh, my actions are in alignment with uh, my desires and my um, feelings of what is uh, intuitively right about um, uh, uh, the world and what I should be doing. So uh, that being said, thanks for coming back to For Gonna Say YouTube channel. Um, I hope you enjoyed hearing about my first semester at UCLA LA Law. Um, and I can't wait to tell you more about how semester two goes in a few months. 
Uh, along the way, I'll have um, some videos. As long as I'm doing what I should be doing, I'll have some videos uh, for you in the meantime. So thanks again, and we'll talk to you later.